Hey, Highway. So, today's Friday night service, right? Um, I know things are still a little different, but hey, you know, whether it's sunny outside or dark, we're still going to worship God. Amen? So, hope you guys have been doing your devotions through every single day, as you guys should have been. Hey, let me get a better camera angle. Maybe this way is better. Huh? Maybe. Anyways, uh, let's pray and then we'll get into it. Yeah? Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this time that we have to share as we get into your word, I pray that you would speak through your servant. And I pray that those listening would have, Lord, ears to hear. So that, you know, it would grow 30, 60, and 100 fold. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Highway, we've been talking about in the book of Acts. So we started last week, uh, well, a couple of days ago on Wednesday. And if you've been following on, a couple of days ago it was Acts chapter 1. Yesterday it was Acts chapter 2. Today we go to Acts chapter 3. In Acts chapter 2, as you guys have, must have read, these people were praying in the upper room. And as they were praying in the upper room, the Holy Spirit came down like mighty gushing wind. And it gave them like new tongues. They were speaking like fire, man. They were speaking in different languages. Amazing things that the Holy Spirit does when the Holy Spirit is in your life. So Highway, and I shared with you guys, for those of you guys who were with us on Instagram on, on Wednesday, about how... You know, in my life, like when the Holy Spirit first came to my life, what it was like. Um, I want all of you guys to really receive the Holy Spirit. Because when you receive the Holy Spirit, man, your life completely, completely changes. So, we'll get into the Word. And hopefully hopefully, you've been doing the Old Testament and New Testament. Every single chapter and chapter, right? Now, today, we're going to go through Acts chapter 3. In Acts chapter 3, it says... Um, we're going to read from verse 1 through 11. It says, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. They approached the temple. A man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, one called Beautiful Gate, so he could beg for, uh, the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to, about to enter, he asked them for some money. So, Peter and John, these two guys are the ones together. Peter, the guy who slashed off the ear of this one person, right? When they were about to capture Jesus Christ. A temple assistant. Peter, the fisherman, right? Peter, the guy who denounced Jesus three times, even though he said, I will never let you go. I will fight to the death with you. But he denounced Jesus three times. Now, you also got John. John, who was... The beloved, like he was always holding on to Jesus, always next to Jesus, so intimately close with Jesus. These two folks were actually together in a gate called Beautiful, right? And they'd meet this one person. And one person who was ill, one person who was lacking, and, and one person, this guy, he was a beggar. So uh, we'll read on in chapter 3, verse 4, right? Uh, it says this. Peter and John looked at that man, looked at him intently, but and Peter said, "Look at us." The man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money, but Peter said, "I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk." So, highway. Peter sees this guy intently with so much charisma down through his eyes. It's like, man, he's looking with like laser coming out of his eyes, and he says, "Hey." I got something for you. The homeless person, the beggar, what would he expect? Money, obviously. He's been begging for money. He has a reputation of begging. Like there are other, probably other beggars around there and they are all asking for that one thing. Everybody knows that this homeless person wants, needs some, some money. Peter calls his attention. But Peter says, I don't have silver, I don't have gold. I'm not going to give you those things. But I'm going to give you something else. Now, highway, we know what happens in this story. Peter says, rise up and walk. Peter, and, Peter says, I'm silver and gold I don't have, but this is what I have. In the name of Jesus, boom. Hi, wait. How long do you think it's been since from that point, going back to the point when Peter denounced Jesus? Do you think it's five years? Do you think it's 10 years? Do you think it's 20 years? I don't think it's been that long. I really don't think so. It's Hardly likely. After Jesus passed away, after he came back to life, 
after spending some time with the disciples, a few days later, several days later, they received the Holy Spirit. And that's Acts chapter 2. And in Acts chapter 3, he's out here. It hasn't been that long. What changed about Peter? The Peter who denounced Jesus Christ. No, I will not let you go. And takes out a sword and then swipes the ear off of that person who was a temple assistant. What changed him so much? It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that was upon him. And that as he was preaching, thousands of people were saved. Like you must have done your devotions yesterday in Acts chapter 2. Peter was a different person. Highway, do you want to be a different person? Do you want to be a bolder person? Do you want to stand up for Jesus Christ bolder? Do you want to... Do you want to be used by God? You can't do it by your own strength. You do it through the Holy Spirit. Let's read on. In Acts chapter 3, verse 7 through, 7 through 8, it says this. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood up on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. Let's read on. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was a lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon, Solomon's colonnade, where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Highway. Peter lifts him up, and then from his ankles, all of that, he was healed. When I read this story, you know what I think about? I think about how Jesus called Peter to walk on water. And as Peter was stepped out of the boat, maybe in my mind, one foot, he's standing on the water. He takes another step, he's standing on water. In his mind, he's like, oh my goodness, I'm actually doing this. And he's stepping and stepping one by one. He's like, this is unbelievable. Can this really be happening? 